you're a designer on Instagram, then no doubt you've heard of Render Weekly. If you haven't, then I'll assume you've been living under a rock. In less than a year, Render Weekly has built up quite the following and community around 3D design and rendering. The way the account works is each Monday, they will post a new prompt. In this example, they suggested that you follow a specific color scheme. Once you're done making your image, go ahead and share it on Instagram and use the hashtag Render Weekly for a chance to be featured. Render Weekly will go ahead and post their favorite results or submissions throughout the week. And every week again, there's a new prompt. So in collaboration with Render Weekly, I challenge you to create a rendering using only one light. It's a great exercise in creative constraint and a good way to learn how to light with intention. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to do this uh, or specifically use an area light within Keyshot. The type of image that we're going after is along the lines of this camera here. In a bunch of these examples, you can see where only one light was used with the negative space playing a big part in creating the overall image. I'm also gonna mention that the model I'm using in today's video is downloaded for free from artech3d.com. They have a bunch of options for you. Another website I like to go to is 3dscans.com. They have a bunch of cool stuff too. All right, we're gonna pop on over into Keyshot and I'm also going to go ahead and import my model. Cool, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a plane to use as our light source. We're gonna to go to uh, edit, add geometry, and we're gonna put a plane in here. If I pull my plane up above the model, I rotate it, move it over, scale it up, then rotate it, scale it down just a bit, and we're gonna move it over here. Then a double click on that allows me to change the material type down to area. And I'll go ahead and just make it a neutral color. We'll pump up the brightness just a little bit since it's gonna be the only light source in this scene. And already we can see some light on the side of our model. It'll be even easier to see once we reduce the brightness in our environment but I'm gonna go ahead and change the material type here first to be a more realistic material. One of the things I like a lot about Keyshot is their cloudy plastic material. It can take a little while to render. Um, it is a more complex material to work with, but um, yeah, it'll all be worth it in the end. The other thing we're gonna to wanna to do is if we are using a translucent material, um, make sure you're not in basic mode. Move on up to product mode. Alrighty, and then the other thing that I'm going to do is before I change my environment brightness, I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit more transparent. I want some light moving through the product. Uh, that may be a little more than I want, but um, we can always change that. I'll go ahead and make this kind of a kind of this off-white color. and it's looking kind of like glass. I'm gonna go ahead and increase the cloudiness. Quite a lot. I'll add a little surface roughness too. So now here's the fun part. If we go to our environment settings, take the brightness down to zero, our scene is being lit entirely from that area light. We go ahead and double click it. We have a few options. We can turn off the light coming off the back of the plane, so we don't need that. If uh, we are doing a rendering like this, but we don't actually want to see the plane, we can always turn off visible to camera. And if we, for some reason, did not want these bright reflections, we could turn off visible in reflections, and then those would disappear. I'm gonna leave those on though, because they really do make it look realistic. Um, if we do find that our image is still a little bit grainy where the light is um, hitting some of the other surfaces, we can always increase our samples. And now that we've placed that plane, it's just a matter of finding an interesting composition or angle. 
a couple of things you can do. Um, if you want to sharpen up your shadow, your light source needs to become smaller. So you can always go into your light and change the scale of it. We can scale it down to say 0.1 and the shadow now gets really sharp. You can see a well-defined shadow. Whereas if it gets bigger, you can see the shadow gets much softer. I'll go down kind of in the middle. And then a couple other things you can do that are pretty cool is you can always move your uh, light source to position it properly. If I lower it and I place the model between my camera and the light source, this is called backlighting. And you can see it creates a cool effect where um, if you have a completely opaque object, you'll get this sort of a rim light effect where you see a bit of a halo around the object just a little bit. Or in this case with a translucent or transparent object, your light of course is going to shine through. And because I'm using a cloudy plastic, the thicker the model is, the less light moves through that area. And then of course we get kind of this sharp silhouette looking um, effect, which is pretty cool. Uh, one other thing I want to show you that can be useful when working with physical lights here is let's say I have decided that I want my camera to be positioned right here but I wish to still move my plane around my scene I can open up my geometry view and then in a win window off to the side here I can go ahead and let's go ahead and right click and say center and fit models there we go so we can see my camera my model and the plane and now if i want i can go ahead and move my plane and see how it affects what i see on the left in the real-time view another cool trick is to just go ahead and set the pivot point of this plane to be our uh, our 3d model and now, if we want, we can just rotate that plane up around our model or kind of in an orbit fashion. And this makes it quick and easy to keep that plane or the light coming off of it focused on our model without having to constantly move our viewport. So hopefully that's enough tips to get you going. Until then, good luck.